Hi guys, Dave here with a new lesson for you. Today we're going to look at the intro solo to Reeling in the Years. Uh, Steely Dan of course is the band and the session guitarist was Elliot Randall. And uh, this is a really terrific solo. The whole song, or the whole solo, is played over a four bar recurring sequence. So you just have two bars of G major and then two bars of A major. So we tend to think of this as a key center it's A and as a modal key it's A major, uh, sorry A mixolydian. So it's like an A major scale but with a flattened seventh, in this case being a G natural. Um, it's got some great ideas in here. Um, there's some major and minor pentatonics mixed up. There's some mixolydian notes being used as, as well as um, outlining some of the chord tones within it. Uh, but we'll get specifically into that as we work through the solo. I think you're going to really enjoy this one, chaps. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. Let's go in for a close-up. Okay, the first phrase is this. So, <clears throat> this is basically him mimicking the vocal line for this. So you can think of it like that. So for that, I'm just on the B string and I'm pulling off 7, 6 to 5. Then playing 5 again. And then we're going to roll back up to 7, 5, 6, 7 with hammer-ons. Like then 5 on the E. Cut it off. Then play it again. Then 7B. And then we're going to do a very quick hammer on from 5 to 7 on the E. And then pull off onto 5. Okay. Um, it's probably worth mentioning that most of this is kind of a, a shuffle or a swing feel as well. So it's almost like a kind of a 12 8 sort of feel on the drums. So yeah, a lot of these eighth notes are swung. You'll hear it in the playthroughs anyway, so I don't think I have to go into too much detail on that. Maybe add a bit of a bright onion, because you're holding that for a bar. Then the next phrase. All right, so the first thing is there's three muted notes like that on the B string, and then he slides into seven. Like that. Then five on the E, and then we play that two more times. Like that. Then we're gonna go over to the B, quick hammer on from five to seven, and then pull off back onto five. Then we're going to go 5, 7 as a hammer on. Then a little quarter tone bend on the fifth fret of the G. Then jumping over to 7 on the A string. Like so. Then the next bit. So that's just sliding from seven to nine on the A, seven on the D, then playing nine on the D. And then we get this little repeated figure. We're gonna play nine on the D, then hammer on 10, and then pull off to 9 and 7. Like that. I'm going to do that three times. And then we're going to go back to 9. Then we're going to do a little double stop on the 7th fret on the D and A strings. And then hammer on 9 on the A. Then you're going to play 7, D, 7, 9 again. 
and then back down to seven on the A and D strings. Mm-hmm. Like something. So you get a. down so that's on the A we're going to play 5 and 4 then on the E string 5 and 0 just take that much we're going to do a quick hammer on from 0 to 2 on the E then on the A Open and slide from two to four, then two on the D, two on the G. So most of this at this point is kind of A major pentatonic for the most part. And that last bit, I suppose you could look at it as a part of a, an A major arpeggio. Way to look at it. Now the next bit, this is outline the G chord, so we're going to play four on the G, three on the B, and three on the E. So you, yeah, outlining a G major chord there, and then we're, we're basically. Again, it's still all part of a G major chord. We're sliding from four to seven on the G string and then playing seven on the E. Sliding sixes is another way to look at that. And then this time we're sliding from seven to 11 on the G and then 10, 10 on the E. So if I put that much together, yeah, a lot of that is outlining the G major chord there. Even that, where you're going from a D to an F sharp, and then to another D, you could almost think of that as a G major seven with the um, the F sharp there. Although he might be thinking about imposing a D major triad over the top of a G, which again gives it a kind of a major sound, major seven sound. Anyway, that's that phrase. Next bit, we're gonna do a quick hammer on from 14 to 15 on the E, and then re-pick 15. Then we're going to jump over to 16 on the G and then back to 15 on the E. Like that. And then we're going to get this little um, scale run down with slides. So if I just give you that much, the first one's in a group of three. I'm going to pick 15, slide to 14. And then re-pick 14. That's the first group of three. Then we're gonna pick 14, slide to 12, and then re-pick 12. So that's how it starts, two groups of three. Then the next bits are groups of four. Pick 12, slide to 10, and then play 10 twice more. So you get. Then we're going to start from the 10, slide to 9, then play 9 twice. And we're going to carry on in that fashion, slide from 9 to 7, then 7, 7. Then slide 7 to 5, 5, 5. Then slide from five to three, then three, three. 
And then the last one, we're going to do a pull off instead. Three to the open E string. And then play E twice. So at that point, we've got. Like that. Then over the G chord, he's now basically taking notes out of the G chord and making a little pattern out of it. So it's all kind of based around like a bar G shape, if you like. So 3-3 three, three on the E. And then 3-3-3 three, three, three on the B. Like so. Then 4-4 four, four on the G. Back to 3-3 three, three on the B. And then 5 on the D string. see that chord being outlined there right then we're going to go 5-5 five, five on the A 5-5 five, five on the D and then down to B or second fret on the A and then he's going to walk up chromatically from 2 3 4 5 then 5 on the D finishing off with an open A string. Like that. Last phrase. This is almost um, A minor pentatonic, really. With some mixed in um, major notes as well. So we've got seven on the D, then quarter tone bend on the 5th fret of the G, then 7-7 seven, seven on the A, then I'm going to slide from 5 to 4 on the A, then I'll finish off with a little A power chord. So it's open A and then 2 on the D. So if I take it from the sliding lick, That's the end of the solo. Okay, so a couple of points I want to make at the end there. I mean, this is a terrific solo, and it's got some really good ideas in it. So rather than just playing A major pentatonic, he's also included a little, a little bit of the minor pentatonic, which is a very common thing to do when you're playing in kind of a mixolydian chord progression like this. Um, other things that he's done that are worth noting is that sometimes, rather than just playing up and down these scales, He's also including arpeggios or notes from the from the chords that he's playing on top of. This is another really nice melodic idea that can help you break out of just playing blues licks over everything. And probably the last thing that's that's really good is that he's kind of broken out of um, just playing in patterns as well by moving just down one string and playing through the notes of the scale just with a series of slides. And again, you can have a lot of fun with this. Uh, going going from different points uh, within the scale. As long as you know where the notes are along one string, you can't really go wrong. Uh, Steve Vai is another guy who, who does things like this quite a lot, where he's just picking, sliding, and then re-picking. So, so if you know the notes in A mixolydian, which are just A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G natural, and then you back up to A, you could have a lot of fun just just sliding around and just doing this over the top of the chord progression. Lots of fun. That sort of thing. Yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah, some nice ideas to take away from this solo um, other than just learning it. Uh, probably the other thing I'll just talk about very quickly is just the sound. Um, a bit tricky, trickier than I thought to actually get closer to the sound. I just figured... And this might still be the case that he just put a fuzz box straight into a mixing desk because it's got quite a dry um, 70s sound. Um, it reminds me a little bit of uh, Summer Breeze by the Isley Brothers when you listen to that guitar sound. 
Um, yeah, it sounds like it's just straight into the mixer. But I did read somewhere that on the session he played through a bass amp, so um, which would ex explain the kind of the tone of the guitar as well. What I have done is use my Helix, and I've basically just used a distortion pedal into a Fender Bassman amp model with a 4x10 um, speaker configuration and I think it got fairly close I'm not saying it's exactly right but it got close enough to kind of get the right flavor of the of the, uh, of the track I think okay guys I hope you have fun with this one um, I will just mention that uh, if you want to support me on patreon just go over to there there'll be a link at the end of the video and in the description box where you can get things like backing tracks to my um, to my lessons as well as tabs that I I use to do these lessons. Okay guys, see you later, have fun, and I'll see you soon.